to, to the, this building. Hi Shannon, we're on level six. Terry's just describing this. Uh, Terry refers to it as a saddle, this area between the church roof and the, and the tower, I should call it. So the original um, belief was that this was an area that was really um, causing a lot of the problems. Uh, I believe it still is, but it's not as bad as I initially thought. I thought this saddle, which is installed to deflect rainwater coming off of the roof and divert it away from this wall, because this is a critical detail, but I've never seen a collection system like this. This is lead coated copper, and they've created a scupper drain to go into uh, an area that is out of sight, and that's a problem. I normally try to deal with rainwater by getting it away from the building, not bringing it back in. So what we believe, and Tom is going to confirm this by way of a water test, is we think there's a gentle slope on that, um, that scupper drain to a pipe that goes through the saddle and comes out on the east side. If in fact this is working, and that's where the water's going, because there's another pipe on the inside, but I believe that's the drain that was installed for the hole in the roof membrane at the belfry. If this is working, then it's fine. What we're going to do is we're going to um, probably um, develop a better um, detail at the wall. I'm not confident that that little bit of caulking is enough to prevent any water coming down um, from getting into the walling and damaging this wall. Um, but I'm more concerned with details like this where this is a collection spot for water and I've only got maybe, you know, two inches before water is going to start getting in behind the system and now i got a problem. So what we're looking at and the reason Rebecca's here looking at it with me, we didn't understand how this is built, but what I can tell right now by feeling it um, the process of learning how detailed the building has been installed is taking measurements, go back and draw, and then you find out the information you're missing. So we came back today and by reaching in here we know there's no wood blocking. This is simply metal that's been turned up and then you've got this um, piece of this roofing system cladding it. So I think what we're going to do, Tom, is ask you to remove all this. Okay. I'd like to leave this. I'd like to rework a detail where we um, finish and create a scupper overflow um, drain here which will allow water to come because it's such a small roof area I thought it was much larger but in a rain like last night I mean you can still see water standing here so yes. we, we yes. know from drawing this is really shallow yes but what I would like is the water to continue to go that way. We'll leave this in place, we'll fix this joint, and then we're going to address a new detail to allow water to flow over. And then it'll land down in the garden below, and we'll probably put a splash right. pad down there. Alternatively, we could look at designing a rainwater leader, but I really don't want to put that on the front elevation of the church. Um, I think in theory, this is just an emergency overflow when we have a really bad rain. I'm going to move. <laughs> a little dusty. We're, be, we're being showered yeah. from above. Hopefully most of the water is going the other way and in an event like last night when there's a real surge, um, it can fall out across the front and be a better way of... It, and just to add a point to that, Shannon, which why Terry's so, you know, and we have to do something here is because basically our brick wall is immediately underneath that. So any overflow ends up trapped between several layers of brick and here we go again with yeah. the spalding of brick and yeah. expansion and contracting in the winter time um, in layman's terms not good <laughs> not good let's okay. go to the other side and get out of this dirty mess